Welcome to Introduction to Computing, Topic 6, Setting Up a Personal Account, Personal Email Account. So what we're going to essentially look at is uh, setting up your personal account, how to log in, how to uh, utilize the browser to access your Gmail account or uh, other personal email accounts, creating an appropriate username and strong password to prevent hackers and other people getting access to your account, and also understanding how authentication happens. So if you need to make changes or altercations to your account, then you're able to do so. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to come down here and launch Safari. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right into my Gmail account and create a new Gmail account. So what you would do is type in gmail.com into your web browser and it comes right up and click on return. And then it will have your Google um, site and it brings you to their Gmail sign-in page. Now, if you already have something signed in and it's saved in your cookie, something we've spoken about in the earlier text, then that information will populate here in the sign-up process. But if for whatever instance you have uh, your new to Gmail, there is a create an account here over to the right-hand side, which is something we'll focus in. Um, one other thing to take note of, though, if you can't access your account, they do have options down here. Say if you forget your username or you forget your password, then they've got, uh, they've got this bottom link down here that'll work with you. And we'll take a look at how that, um, how when you set up your account, how you can have better control over losing something like your password or your username. So let's go ahead and create an account here. We're shot of uh, Gmail once again. And what, what happens is you can actually kind of read a little bit about the Gmail account, see why, um, what, the, um, what the future holds for Gmail, as well as some of the features here on, on a Gmail account for you. And some of the new things they're working on on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side is where you would fill in all your information. And this is pretty consistent throughout any type of email account that you set up for their, for their setup page. So if you go to Hotmail or even Yahoo, you're going to see a, set, a similar setup procedure. So we're just going to type our first and last name. We'll type Ryan Kelly here. And then our username. As I mentioned before, a username is very important. You want to pick something that is professional. You want to pick something that you would feel comfortable putting on a resume, uh, putting on your LinkedIn profile page that, uh, that other people will, uh, will recognize as a professional email address. You don't want to have something that's uh, you know, just kind of childish. You just definitely want to steer away from that. This is something that you're going to use um, not only on a, a personal basis, but also on a professional basis. So you want to be very careful with, with the email that you choose. Um, as well as you can use letters, numbers, as, and periods as what they have here. So you could use your first and last name, you know, something of that sort. So we're going to take a little closer look at how to do that. So I would type in initially, say, Brian Kelly. And I would go over to the next box. And I can just simply tab over to the next box. And what happens here is it says somebody already has that username. So let's try another one. And it gives you some options. Typically, these options are really not great options at all. It's not something that you would want to um, you would want to add. BK88797 isn't the, the greatest username in the world. Um, neither are these two that they give you. So I think you want to think of something that is uh, that is unique. You need to have at least, as it tells you here, um, once you do it, you need to have at least eight characters. Um, so that's something that you need to keep, keep in mind. Also, it's not a bad idea to keep consistent username from, from site to site. Therefore, you don't have different usernames for your email, a different username for this and that, um, and, and pretty consistent. So that's a, that's a good idea as well. And you want it as unique as possible because nowadays it's very difficult to get your first and last name unless you have a, an incredibly unique first and last name so you want to think of something besides that. You know, I chose Ask Mr. Kelly before, and that was a nice one. Now, I have that one already, so it's not going to come up as available before. 
but I have maybe asked Mr. Kelly 38, not so good, and some of these other ones here. So you want to come up with something that's, uh, that's going to work, that's going to be consistent for you. And you just kind of have to go through this process and, and, and pick something that is workable for you. Um, I'm just going to pick something here that, uh, you know, I'm not going to worry about that for now. And you would pick something that, that is the most appropriate, uh, most appropriate for you. Um, you can even do first lap, maybe a middle initial if you have something, something of that sort. Um, bring ourselves down to create a password. Creating a password is important. You want something that has, has strength to it um, and that is not going to be easily accessible by, um, by other individuals. So what I recommend is you taking, say, a favorite movie, a favorite uh, city, state, a favorite um, fruit or vegetable, and as I mentioned in the text, create that into something that is unique to you and start incorporating some special characters with inside of that um, with inside of that password. So I, for instance, we could take avocado and we could transfer avocado into a, an efficient password. So we could take the A and a lot of times your password, there's a few things with passwords. Passwords typically call from sign in to sign in for at least one character to be in uppercase. So we're gonna take that A in avocado and we're gonna create an capital A for that. And of course this tells us too short because it's a dynamic box. It's gonna recognize what we're typing in. Then we're gonna type V, O, and then we have a C and an A for the next letters here, C, A, D. So we're gonna take the C and convert that into a number three the A into a number one, the D into a number four, and then we're gonna have add O at the end, and then we'll just do number one and explanation point. So that way we have a special character, we have an uppercase, we have a lowercase, and we have something that's at least eight characters and it's not found in the dictionary and it's not a pet's name, and it's not password, or one, two, three, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, password one, two, three, anything like that. It's really, the, those are the more common passwords that you find, which is frightening because those are certainly not secure at all. So we also have numbers in this one as well. So you're looking to include numbers, uppercase, lowercase, and special characters inside of your password. You don't want to find anything that's in the dictionary. And if you use those items, those are not going to be found in the dictionary. So we'll tab over. Confirming your password is essentially retyping your password and make sure that you typed it correctly into the, uh, into the previous box. We'll just type capital A, V, O, and three, A, four, O, one explanation point. Confirms it's the same match here. And we'll select our birthday here, so we'll just do, um, let's do January 1, we'll do 1980 here. And then we'll select the gender, we can do, um, we can do mail. Mobile phone, this mobile phone is essentially for keeping your password secure and making sure that, you know, you're not a computer signing up for this, uh, for this password here. Now, what will happen is if you don't, you ask yourself, well, what if I don't have a phone number? In that case, you could use a, a friend's, neighbor's, family member's phone number. It's just going to help keep things secure, and it's going to send you a text message um, when, you, uh, when you sign in. So you do need to have some sort of phone number in play for yourself to, um, to go ahead and sign up. Um, so I'm going to make sure that we have a phone number here. We'll just do 702-249-8877. Your current email address. This is an email address for your other accounts. Now going back to the, um, to the initial login page where we said, well, you know, need help signing in. If you have an email address already as you're signing up for this Gmail account, 
what's going to happen is that's going to set it up for uh, security purposes. So if somebody attempts to log into your account and it's not, uh, you know, not requested, then they will send an email to that uh, to that other email address. That's an email address that they can send you your username if you forget it. They can send you your password in case you forget a password. So it's a good idea to have that um, initial or additional email address up. If this is your first email account, then you would just ignore that for now because you wouldn't have a current email address. But as we go through and sign in, we'll show you how to actually add in an additional email account. Um, and again, this is proving that you're not a robot. If you skip this verification, phone verification may be required. We'll deselect that. These actually aren't that bad. We can uh, pretty much write what we see here with no problem. Um, in some cases, these are a little bit more difficult to read, um, but you also have the option to, uh, to refresh these to get a new challenge, like how they say challenge, and then get an audio challenge, which will um, eventually sp essentially speak a word for you. So you can do it that way. This is just to prevent really spam bots from signing in for multiple, multiple email accounts. Um, come down here, you would select your location. We are uh, set up for the United States, so we're going to keep that the way it is. And then if you have another loca location, you would just select that, and you can scroll down and find the, uh, find the appropriate location. Um, if you know the first letter of your um, country, which hopefully you do, you can press that on your keyboard, and it will bring you directly to your country, um, that section of your country. Um, you want to agree to the uh, terms of service, and this also says may use my account information to personalize um, plus ones on content ads and Google website. That's a little bit about personalization. Um, it's not a bad idea to deselect that if you want to. Therefore, it kind of keeps your information a little bit more private um, in this respect, so you can kind of control where that information is, uh, is, is showing up. Now, once you're done with the sign-in process, you would simply click sign in, and it would go ahead and create that email account for you. Set your mobile phone number in here, then it's going to ask you for, um, or it's going to send that text message to you for a, for a sign-in procedure. Um, we're going to start a new tab, jump right into, uh, say, um, Hotmail. which we can access now that uh, Microsoft is now transferring their Hotmail to Outlook. So we've got Outlook.com, which is really their, their new um, web-based email account. So you can basically, you can sign in for a new account and you can sign up for a, essentially a Microsoft account. So what they have really is the answer to the Gmail account. They have a Microsoft account. So Microsoft has various products as well. And as you can see, this is a very similar sign-up account. And it also says if you use Hotmail, SkyDrive, Xbox Live, or even have a Windows phone, a phone, you more than likely already have a Microsoft account. So you can use that same account. Now what's happening is it's tying all that information into one account, just like Google does. Once you have that Gmail account, essentially, yes, you're creating a Gmail account, but you're really, in effect, creating a Google account. And you can use that Google account for all the different types of Gmail services. So you log in once, you have an account for YouTube, you have an account for Google Voice, and so on and so forth. Much like Microsoft, if you sign in for Microsoft account here, you automatically have a SkyDrive account, you automatically have an Xbox Live account, you have a Hotmail account, you know, things like that that you, uh, that you have into play. So keep that in mind too because Microsoft has a, a whole host of products as well. We jump over to Yahoo.com. Very similar sign-in procedure. We've got a sign-up button here that we can sign up. And again, it asks us, it's a very, very clean sign-up procedure here. Same deal, gender, birthday, postal code. Here, it's asking for your Yahoo ID again, and it's gonna give you password, password strength, that information. 
and it also asks you for an alternate email. As you can as you can see, neither one of these, um, with the exception, well, Microsoft does, but Yahoo does not ask for a uh, ask for a phone number, and they Microsoft does a little bit different in the sign up procedure for the phone number too. This is more for authentication reasons, but a very similar sign up procedure. So they really the most important item to remember when you're doing your sign in is picking an appropriate username and once you have an appropriate username that's going to be a fantastic tool for you to uh, for to utilize once you have your email account set up once you're ready we would go back to gmail.com and since I already have signed in before and it's actually stored inside of my uh, inside of my cookies um, that information populates in the dialog box you can also select stay signed in now something to keep in mind with the stay signed in is if you're on a public computer you do not want to have that selected therefore anybody that comes in and sits down in front of the computer launches gmail then this sort of information would populate and it would automatically sign in to your account you don't want that if you're on say a computer at a library or a public workstation. That's something you want to steer clear of because then anybody that sits down could have access to your account information. That's certainly not something that you want. Um, in this case, I'm a private computer in my, own, in my own house, so I feel comfortable with selecting Stay Signed In. Um, as I mentioned, you've got Can't Access Your Account. If you're having trouble, you can select, I don't know my password, I don't know my usernames, or I'm having problems signing in. If you find yourself that you cannot sign in, you verified your username, your password, somebody might have gone in there and, and switched your login information. And that's something that you want to report immediately to your web service provider. Um, so if you've got a Microsoft account, Yahoo or Gmail, you want to go directly there and tell them, yes, I'm having problems signing into my account. So you can uh, verify that information um, and it will stop sending messages out through that account, kind of put a hold on that account until you, uh, until you work that information out. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in here and I'm going to click here so far it pops up and it just says, do you want to store your confidential information in our keychain? It's just a way for Safari to um, always store that information. As I said, I'm on a private computer, so it's not that big of a deal for me. So I, I feel comfortable with that. I'm going to go here to my settings. Once again into my settings. And here, under my accounts, I'm clicking accounts and import. Here is where I can change my password if I want to. I can also change password recovery options so what it will allow me to do is add in an alternate email account here. So I've got my Yahoo account as my recovery and alternate email account. So if they need to verify your account, it's going to send that information to you. It also has security questions that are signed up. That's not something you did in the sign up procedure. So that's something that you will need to go through here and do account recovery. This is important to fill out when you're creating a user account because it gives you additional verification tools. But you also need a strong password because if you do set up this stuff inside of your email account, you don't want other people having access to that information either. So you do want a very strong password set up. So you know that sort of thing becomes less important here but you still have that as, as an option. You can also import mail and contacts. So if you wanted to import mail from another particular, um, another service, then you can, uh, you can do that as well. And you can just add that information. I can import email accounts and I can simply just sign into that email and it will draw those email accounts. Um, Check email from other accounts using POP3, as we talked up in a previous lesson, previous topic. Uh, the difference between that and that will add a, a POP account for you. Um, some companies utilize Gmail for their, uh, for their primary account. That's not something you worry, worry about as a personal email account. And then you can add multiple accounts here. 
So you've got a variety of different options under the accounts as import and you need to make sure that you know how to get that and change um, or add your uh, password recovery options therefore for you. So when you do sign up, it's a very simple sign up procedure. Um, you know, as you can see in Microsoft and Yahoo, you just want to have a good username in advance before you do that, as well as figuring out a very strong password that you feel comfortable with. And once you do that, you're really ready to go and create your own personal email account.